Jonathan Hood. <laughs> Developing successful teams will be given by our immediate past district director, Sue Delotti. It, uh, Sue, I don't know what I can say about Sue that hasn't been said. Sue is an inspirational leader that finds people and supports them and hones their abilities and is someone in this past year who has provided me with a lot of support and feedback uh, in order to help execute my role. And I really look forward to working with you this year in your role as immediate past district director. Uh, and I know that she will support anybody here in the room who has uh, the need for, you know, a question, uh, some advice, uh, someone to listen. Uh, Sue will be that person for you. And to help us understand how we can develop successful teams, please welcome Sue Delotti. one role at midnight on June 30th and then you start another role, many people in this room. You were a member of one team and now all of a sudden you join another. And knowing who those people are, how they work, how they function, what makes them tick is really important for our success. Many of you may have been had arms twisted to become part of this team. Some of you were keen and stepped right forward and said, I want to do this. And however you came into this role, we are very, very grateful. You have a number of support systems, one of which is a team that I am going to be talking about this morning. Basically, our session is going to cover four key areas. We're going to talk about what your roles are as area and division director, who the team members are that you work with. We're also going to talk about the agreements that you could come up with. Ron has asked that area and division directors create area and division success plans. The team agreement is part of it. We will go through that. We'll also talk about possible things that motivate people. We, we as individuals are motivated in very different ways, and so are the people that you work with. And we'll talk about those. And then, as chances are, there could be conflict. Conflict of you dealing with club people. Could be conflict within your own team. Could be conflict outside. We'll give you some tips to deal with that as well. The main objectives, these are the objectives that we hope that as this session is finished, this is what you will be much clearer on. If you have any questions, once this session goes by, it's an hour, you may not get everything, know that you are still supported and we will provide you with additional information. But you should be able to walk away understanding better what your area and division director roles are, how you are going to determine who's in the teams that support you, and how these teams, thank you, Mon, how these teams offer the support to you in your role. We'll also be describing what's in that team charter and what's in it for you to complete it looking at how good teams work and what makes a good team a good team. There are a variety of principles for motivation that are extremely important that we will be covering, and then some tips on dealing with conflict. Ron was good enough to provide each person a workbook that is on our Slack channel. If you want to take notes, feel free. You can put it right into your workbook. If that's easier, otherwise you take notes as you see fit. Yes? Your connection to Wi-Fi, I seem to be having problems with the guest account. There is. I believe it's CA guest. Yeah, it's supposed to be CA guest. But for those, who, uh, for those who are having trouble accessing CA guest, uh, if you use the secure, <coughs> Did we have Mark today? Oh, we uh, are here right now. Okay, my car. I will. All right. Hmm. 
we'll, we'll let you know. But oh, Parker, thank you. And while we're doing that, I must say that yesterday, not only did I have challenges jumping in, but mine dropped partway through. And Paul Jacobs, Division C Director, is a dream. He got me in both times. So do not hesitate. If I was able to ask him, feel free to ask him if you still continue to have problems. I'm not, I'm, I'm not dreaming about Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yes, yes, we, Just saying. You can imagine what you're dreaming about. Well, I did. I did last night. <laughs> so the AC Secure Network username password. Give that a try. Hopefully, it works better than the uh, guest password, because I understand yeah. many of the modern browsers say, "Really, we don't want to let you into this network. It's bad." Yeah, exactly. But it's probably okay. But it does let you into it. Yes. If you're persistent, you'll get through the guest okay. one. If this doesn't work, try that. <laughs> Let's start first with the area director. I see a number of people in the room that have taken area director positions before. Maybe you were an assistant area director this year. I've taken one in the past. What are, in your mind, what are the responsibilities as an area director as you see them? Anyone? Everyone here have absolutely no clue. Okay, Fran, you've been an area director before. What's one of the responses? To support and encourage the club, the executives, and also the participants, members, regular members of the clubs, um, encouraging them in their educationals, recognizing their educationals as well, meeting with them, being available to answer questions. Ron mentioned it yesterday that area directors are the lifeline for the district. You are the direct link with the clubs and their executives. Absolutely. So, then? I say making the link between the club and the district in all areas. Okay. So, in all facets of what the district does, the area director is the one that is the direct connection with the club and its members. Any other responsibilities? Randy? Support the clubs when they have uh, questions. So you're the font of knowledge. You may not have all the answers, but you have resources to go and get answers to any of the questions, for sure. Any other responsibilities come to mind? Is you run the area contest. Yes, you have area contest coming up, oh, and that's going to be a responsibility, for sure. Anything else that comes to mind? Yes, John. Apparently you have to file area director. Yes. <laughs> You'll be asked to do at least two official visits to the club and you will be putting in a report on that visit. That's a responsibility. Anything else come to mind? Now what happens if some of these clubs are possibly less than 20 members, less than 12 members, maybe five members? Coaching. Yep. It could be coaching. It could be finding them a club coach to help them. Mentoring, coaching, yeah. support. Absolutely. Acting as a mentor. Anything else come to mind? Yes. So there is another thing that we could consider is to uh, solve problems sometimes. Yes. Yes. And make a solution for a conflict or a sort of situation that could be uh, clarified, could be easier for everyone. Could very well be. At some point when we get into the conflict resolution, we'll talk a little bit more about what the role really is of the area and division director. There are some fun things though. There's some good things going on within the clubs and you want to be able to recognize those, right? Can you think of any fun things that are going on? You may want to, yeah, I knew you'd think of it, Gavin. There's some fun things that are going on. Well, it, it's funny, um, and I didn't realize this until recently. So clubs are contacting me to find out the area director to help in the, um, the uh, Segundo Passacion. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, so they need to change yes. from um, leadership groups, club presidents. Yeah, they could bring you in to install those new club officers. Yes. They could, let's say, recognize someone who has just received a level one or a distinguished toastmaster, and they yeah. want someone from the district to yeah. be there to join in. They could have potlucks. They could have. Anything. Anything going on. There are a variety of responsibilities. Now, you may find that a bit overwhelming, thinking, okay, I, I know when Ron passed me in the hallway and said that you possibly should consider being Area 12. He may not, at that point, outline every single responsibility. Hi, huh, Rob? I mean, we knew that eventually there would be trade. Hey, you've got an hour, right? You always negotiate part of the hour. Exactly. So the, the thing is, you're not alone. That's the good news. And you do have a team, a team that's already built in and a team that you can augment to. And we'll talk about that. So your area team is what we call an area council. And the members of that team are as follows. For each of the clubs that are in your area, you should have a president, a vice president of education, and a vice president of membership. Those three members from each club form part of your area council. Now you'll notice there are two that are listed here in yellow. That means that these are optional. <laughs> Nobody says you have to have them, but knowing the number of activities that are going on within your area, I would strongly suggest you look to see if you can get a few more people to help. The first one is an assistant area director they call it on the slides education, but in your workbook, it's assistant area director of program quality. And the other one is an assistant area director of marketing, but in your workbooks, they call it assistant area director club growth. Now, we had very quick introductions this morning, but Kimberly is overall responsible for program quality and Tanya is responsible for club growth. So as the year progresses and you hear the activities that these two are doing in the district, they will be turning to area and division directors to assist them in delivering those programs. It only makes sense to me that you turn to others within your area council and get help for you to deliver on what it is you have to do. Now, what do you think an assistant area director of program quality could help the area director with? Any thoughts there? You'll, you'll support, but it, could you be a little more specific, Nadia? What, what support would you think? Exactly. Let's say, for instance, some of the clubs have challenges with having speakers. Then you could have your assistant area director provide educationals. Wouldn't have to be you as an area director. You could have someone else. Anything else that might come under that program quality pact that you might need help on? Yes? The area contacts. Perfect. Many area directors feel the pressure of doing the contest all by themselves. And you'll hear later today when Tony gives you some tips in terms of your contest, it doesn't have to be you. There are lots of people out there that love contests and would be more than happy to help the area. And this is a finite way for them to help. Great example. Anything else that might come under the 
area director's <coughs> role for program quality. It's the same with the club officer training. Perfect. We know that once the makeup has finished and we have some online training, there very well could be some additional makeup training. Once again, wouldn't have to be the area director. The area director could get someone experienced, maybe a past leader who wants to come in and help and give training. Excellent. Kim, can you think of any of your responsibilities as program quality that possibly this group could be assisting on? I think another big area this year we're going to focus on is recognition. So handing out those pins, I want to have you guys be the face of the clubs and handing out those recognition, and you may want to use some help with that as well to track who is achieving those goals every week. Excellent. That's right. We all know that an area director can be very busy and may not have enough time to do everything, all the visits, travel here, recognize there. Maybe you can have somebody else that will go in on behalf of the area and present the pins present them recognition. If there's one thing, the message that has been said so far to the division directors, and we want to encourage this with the area directors, there are so many activities that you're responsible for, but being responsible and doing them yourself is not the same thing. As long as you get them done, you can have all sorts of other people help you in that regard. Now, let's move to the division directors. Division directors have already been here for a day. They have had the benefit of listening to both uh, Tanya and Kimberly outlining what their plans, their dreams are for this year. As a division director, what are your responsibilities? And the area directors can sit back. <laughs> so division directors, what's Man your responsibilities? Ready? Managing uh, the area directors, keeping in contact with them to see if they need any assistance? Yes, exactly. So while you are the lifeline to the club, if you have any questions or concerns or really need to understand anything, area directors always have their division director, for sure. Anything else? We, we, the division directors are the ones overall responsible for developing the TLIs. Kimberly is once again going to have a main point of reference for them. So they are the ones coming up with the content the workshops, the speakers, the venues. Anything else? Yes? Division contests? Yes, just as we have area contests, we also have division contests. Yeah. Yes? Budget? Yes. Budget. Yes, you have to determine what their financial requirements are for the year and create a budget. Tanya? Uh, taking the message of the district and passing it down and making sure that the area and the clubs are all, that we're all rowing in the same direction. Yes, keeping in mind that at the district executive committee meetings, both the area and division directors are there hearing the message at the same time, but there will be other discussions that division directors will have that they'll want to share with their area directors to then share with their clubs. Anything else come to mind? Yes. Um, help build and support new clubs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when we talked about the, the uh, club growth, that is something that Tanya will be talking a lot about this year. And both area and division directors can be implicated in many ways. If an area director knows that they are going to be losing a club, chances are they're going to want to see about gaining a new club. If the division director sees that there are clubs being lost in the division, they're going to want to get other ones in as well. Any other responsibilities come to mind? Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, that's a responsibility of both the area and the division directors. We've got four <coughs> district executive committee meetings a year, and I'm certain that Ron would want your participation in those meetings. You also have two district council meetings a year. He would want your participation in that as well. Yes? Also, the training for the area director and the support for area director in the past. Yes, that's a, that's a point that sometimes when Ron has indicated this is the mandatory training, absolutely, this is what Toastmasters International indicates that all area and division directors need. But you specifically could have additional training as an area director that you require. When you speak to your division director, they may very well have the expertise, or if they don't, they will see if they can get that training for you in other ways. We can never be trained enough in the areas that we need. Yes? So when someone asks a question, can I get you to repeat the, 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 the question just to ensure that we re record it better? Okay. Yep, yeah, thank you. Craig just asked me if I wouldn't mind repeating. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Just a little test check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just as the area council meet members have area councils, the division team has a division council. So division directors, your team is made up of each of your area directors. You'll also notice that there are two boxes there that are yellow. Those are not mandatory, but we would encourage you to find people for these positions. One is the, yes, one of them, now that says that's interesting, yes. The assistant division director, although this is area director, I'm not sure why it would say that. Oh, but it's an assistant, area director. it's an assistant division director for education or program quality, and an assistant division director of marketing for Club growth. Now, what do you think an assistant division director for program quality could help you with? We heard what the responsibilities are. What could they help you with? As I uh, suggested yesterday, to help the VP education of each club to do their task with a better uh, knowing of all the aspects of their task. Yes, and knowing that club quality more often than not, club quality depends on the number of educational achievements in a club and how clubs are doing in membership. You could have one individual speak directly with the Vice President of Education to help areas in that regard. Similarly, you could do the same thing, have someone focus on membership and that would help the area directors with membership challenges within their clubs, for sure. Anything else that an assistant division director could do in the way of education or club growth? Pathways could be a, a real help. There could be challenges within the various areas still for pathways and this individual could help the area directors in identifying what are the needs. Exactly. And I know that Kimberly has talked about having an accelerator again for pathways. This could be a good way for the area directors to target who should be invited, who should be directed to these accelerator programs. Absolutely. So you can see that there's a variety of different activities that you as an area and division director are responsible for that you don't have to do yourself, but you need to get them done. So having as many people as you possibly can to assist you in those roles is crucial. The way the area and division councils work is they ask for you to have a minimum of two meetings a year. 
You can decide if you're going to have more meetings. You can decide if they're going to be with food or they're going to be social, if they're going to be in a corporate environment or someone's home. You can decide how that will be. The key, though, is for area and division council meetings to be successful, there's two things that need to be looked at. One, you are going to be focusing on, at the area level, the club needs. So that may very well be sharing best practices for bringing in new members, encouraging educational achievements at the area. It could very well be what kind of activities are we going to do within the division to support our clubs. The second function of an area and division council meeting that sometimes gets forgotten is that it is there to support the area and division directors who have responsibilities. I've seen many meetings where the discussions are about uh, how are we going to help the clubs, what are we going to do for our members, whereas they have forgotten a really important aspect is I've got contests coming up that I need organizing, I have a number of clubs that haven't put in their dues yet and I need follow up. There's a variety of activities that an area and division director needs to be responsible for that they need to talk about with their team on how are we going to deliver. Because if you don't, what will happen is as an area or division director, you'll somehow think all of these responsibilities are on my shoulders. I'm doing them out here. But you have a team, that area council, that division council, is your team to help you deliver on the responsibilities you have. It's not just you. You have other people to help. And I, I want to make sure that we're very clear in that regard. The really nice thing is, and what I really love, is how this particular slide shows the link. For instance, the division council has the area directors in it. And the area directors also have their support. So you could very well have some challenges going on in your area council meeting that can be brought forward in your division council meeting and get other area directors to give you some advice. Conversely, there could be things going on in your area council meeting that are really great things happening within your clubs that should be shared and they can be brought in by your area director to the division council. So there's a lot of synergy that should be going on within the division. And once those meetings get going and once people start really feeling supported in terms of their activities, that's when you really feel you're not alone. It was an interesting comment yesterday Davender felt at the end of the day. He already felt he wasn't alone. Imagine when he starts working with his area directors and working with his fellow division council members. That's really when it, it hits you. And that's the exciting, exciting time. Yes? Has this structure been uh, suggested for a while? Maybe I'm not being area director. It's have considered this, but my concern is that if you finally got someone to step up to be president or VP Ed or VP Marketing, and now you're asking them, oh, can you also help me with the area? I'm concerned that that's going to cause them to go, let's, I, I have enough on my plate. So I'm just wondering, has this worked in the past for many years, and I just haven't known about it, and are people willing to to step up and be part of the area council? You know, I love that question because this idea of burdening our president's vice president of education or our, our membership with additional activities, here's the good news. When you hold your area council meetings, you will find that they will suddenly see 
that as president of